What's going on, everybody? I hope you're all well, and welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. So in this episode, as you notice, we are back to Double Mage, and we did pull Morrigan out, and in the meantime, she did get a level up, so let's go ahead and address this first things first. She has six attribute points, which is huge. We are going to dump almost all of those into magic, and we're going to give her one willpower. We do want her to have a lot of magic for what's upcoming next. She has two spells, and of course, you know we want the flaming weapons for the party. It's going to come in huge for us when we're double maging. We're going to have the flat buff. Now that we have that, we'll keep frost weapons there in case we ever need it, but it will rarely be a thing. Go ahead and have her cast that now, actually. And the reason we bring Morrigan out, let's go to her inventory quickly. Let's see if she can equip this staff I've been saving for her. She can. Staff of the Magister Lord, which is huge. It is a six buff to willpower, which is why I put most of it in magic, knowing that we were going to get that. We have 6 spell power, plus fire damage, plus spirit damage, and mana regeneration in combat. This staff is absolutely insane and perfect for Morrigan. The reason why she's here is it is time to go to the Circle Tower and see about getting some assistance for Redcliffe. We're going to see what we can do for Connor. Um, we're going to have an option of who to send inside this, uh, this Fade Ritual. And obviously, of course, we do not trust Jowen. He's a Blood Mage and... You know, he says he's okay with being executed currently, but he could change his mind in the future. And since he'll have access to whatever demon made the deal with Connor, I'm not comfortable sending him in. We could all, I'm sure Irving would also volunteer, given the man that he is, but Irving is too important to the circle. He is the current leaders of the Mages of Ferelden, and Gregor only is allowing the circle to exist because of him. If he falls, I don't know who gets an elected let next. So well, that's a bad thing. Now, Wynne, she is very important to our party. She is a master creation mage. I trust both of these people to resist a demon when they're trying to tempt them, but I can't lose either of them. If something happens to Irving during the battle against the Darkspawn, Wynne is the best runner-up candidate for First Enchanter. She doesn't want it, but I do believe she would take it if she had to, which really only leaves one option, which is Morrigan. Now, Morrigan does have some dubious interests we're not really quite sure what our motivation is for being with us but one thing we can be assured of is the famous witch of the wild and daughter of flemeth would not make a deal for her soul with the demon there's too much ego and knowledge in morrigan and she is also very powerful there's one mage out of all of these people that i would trust to shove off a lightning ball or a fireball up whatever this demon is as ass it will be her so we're going to be using morrigan that's why we're bringing her along welcome back friend You'll be glad to learn that the circle is well on its way to recovery. That's good. That makes me really happy. Can the circle go to Redcliffe to save a possessed child? The child is possessed. But killing the demon would mean killing the... Unless you intend to enter the Fae. Yes. Yes, it can be done with a group of mages. I shall gather what mages I can, and we shall leave promptly. A life is at stake. And of course, Irving, the great man that he is, needs little to no convincing. He's just like, yep, I'll go get my stuff and we'll go handle it, which is very cool. Gregor, I'm sure, will be sending some Templars secretly to watch. But he seems to trust Irving a lot, and I do too, honestly. I, I think Irving is the right man for the job here. So now we're going to go back to Redcliffe. And we're going to handle this Connor situation, hopefully with the minimal amount of bloodshed. What ambush did we run into here? Okay, so this, this ambush can be tough. So immediately, I want you to cast Winter's Grasp. I want you to hit this one with a Lightning Bolt. Alistair, I want you to attack him, and I... I'm going to just desperately try and do something here. So, Alistair popped Torn. I'm going to try and stun him. Beautiful, we got it off. Now we need to chop that wood. He needs to die. Beautiful. And you can actually encounter this very early, which is very hard when you do. I already see. My mage is in need of dire help here. I'm gonna try and get rid of some of these before Alistair's path in gets him trapped when he goes for the archers. 
Lots of XP in this little ambush. It's very unfortunate if you find this encounter early, you do end up losing out on all this trap XP because you will not have the levels you need to dismantle them. Luckily, we got it pretty late, so we're well equipped. You can get this, like, first things first. Right as you leave Loader and you can be unfortunate enough to get this little ambush. It has happened to me before. And you lose out on, like, 300 XP from these traps. Perfect timing on that. There's also just a tough fight early on, like, this Darkspawn Emissary, early, when you can't take the kind of damage. He can hit you with a Blood Magic spell that prevents you from healing and just constantly drains your life force. It's pretty over for whoever he casts that on early game when you don't have the health pool from gear and stuff. And then of course you can't dismantle the traps, your party will just run forward and get stuck in these sometimes, that's a mess. I'm very glad we got that late. Onwards to Redcliffe. Alright. And the castle should be holding up okay, at least I hope so. So Perth isn't out here, so that's a good sign that he hasn't been turned into a shambling corpse. And here's the circle. Talk to Tegan for a second. The mages are waiting to start the ritual. The mages wait to perform the ritual. I do hope this is worth the time it has taken to assemble them. Ah, there you are. We have brought Lyrium and begun preparations for the ritual. That's good. We can start any time. So only one person can go through? Yes. We haven't sufficient Lyrium at present to send more than one mage into the Fade. Do you have any last-minute advice? It truly depends on the manner of demon. It sounds like a spirit of greed and desire, one of the more powerful in the hierarchy. It will likely engage you in dialogue and tempt you with an offer. Avoid it. Making deals with demons never turns out well. Of course, we're sending Morrigan and she already knows this, so... Let's do this now. I'm glad we decided to take this route. This is really the best option. Me too. Very well. Who will go into the Fade? Now, as we discussed earlier, I've already made my decision on who's going. It just seems like the best bet to send Morrigan here. Then let us begin forthwith. You see no arguments from her. She's more than willing. Sure she'll enjoy. Gets to know wits. Decent amount of approval from the party. Uh, the only downside here is if Connor's spirit is in here, which it likely is, Morrigan's gonna be the one to talk to him in all of her harsh glory. Here's Eamon. You there. Have you seen my son? I can I can hear him, but I cannot find him. This blasted fog has me turning in circles. Let's try to get through to him a little. This is the Fade. Your kind cannot navigate it any more than you could navigate a dream. I don't understand. Where is my Connor? I will find him for you since I foolishly gave my word that I would. <laughs> Leave me to it. No. No, you're trying to lead me astray. I do not believe you. Connor! Connor, where are you? Marion, never the one to be happy doing a good deed. Is anyone out there? Hello? I shall do it. He is one of Karna's little mind splits. Of course, there again is the what I think is the Black City. I'm pretty sure that would be it. It's in the Fade in the Tower, too. Seems like that would be the Black City. This is supposed to be at the center of everything. Nothing else looks much like a city. Who are you? Are you the one that made father ill? Tell me now. Uh, let's try and be nice. Let's see how Morrigan's oratory skills are when it comes to being good. Shoo! Run along and play. Or whatever. No! You're here to hurt me. You said shoo. I know it. I won't let you. Very tactful. Uh, 
Okay, we see it's a desire demon that is inside Connor. Probably uh, used his desire to help his father against him. Ah, of course the stun wouldn't work much. That first little face off with the desire demon. No, so it doesn't seem like being nice is Mark in strong suit, so we'll try and talk to the demon next time. Hmm. Cut through the nonsense and just confront the demon directly. You You're the one making father sick. I'll help him. You can't stop me. Why do you keep hurting me? Why are you trying to stop me? Try and communicate. Enough of these games. Give me what I want. Trespasser! I will drive you out! You would have expected Morrigan to, uh, or the demon rather, to take that deal quite forthrightly since she just sort of said, Give me what I want. The desire demon, she would probably see that as an opportunity, you would think. Now, let me learn her ability bar quickly. What do we have? We have mana cleanse. Mana Drain, Aura, Spider Shape, Vulnerability, Disorient, Drain Life is going to be our heal. I see. Another battle I don't see why Drain Life is going to do much for us. Morrigan is very powerful at this point. This demon does not know what it's up against. Get out of here! You have to get out! Blessed art thou who exists in the sight of the maker. Father wonders, seeking me, trapped within my web. All is as it should be. Why must you interfere? Why do you speak through illusions? Come, let us converse. No, it is time for you to go now. Do not persist, or things will go very badly for you. And now we're going to have two rage demons to deal with, I believe. I should do it. Trying to get sneaky with the one behind us. Given that I know that this is happening, let's go ahead and put some healing potions on Morrigan just in case. I'd prefer not to need them, but you never really know. So be it. Take a sip. Oh, this should be good. Winter's grasp is gonna absolutely destroy that demon. <laughs> 40 damage on the line and is very good. And that kind of spell power is the reason why Morgan seemed like the perfect choice to me to bring in. Now the diamond demon's finally willing to actually talk to us. Now this fight could be a little tricky, it's going to split itself, but if you keep an eye on the area, you'll be able to tell pretty easily which one it is. No more illusions. Now we meet face to face. You see my true form and stand in my domain. It is here I am most powerful, and yet I have no wish to engage your power, nor should you be so eager to engage mine. Perhaps we should converse instead? I don't think flattery is gonna cut the cake with Morrigan. Also final confrontation. We already know what this thing is, we don't need to talk to it, we need it to die. Do you take me for a fool? I know better than to bargain with your kind. Alas, that is sad. Very well then, if you wish a battle, you will have it. Let us see if your power matches your boldness, creature. The irony in her calling us the creature. Ah! Take a sip while we can. This is the correct one you need to attack. Begin the he is resisting our spells, unfortunately. Keep as much of an eye on her movements as possible. This is the one to attack. 
And that's gonna be it for the cheeky little desire demon. Now her being dead on the floor, Connor should be okay. I guess we'll see how that turned out. Miss Connor and the unworthy is old. If anybody should have died here for all this, it would be her. Of course, she got to live. It's always the innocents that suffer. I'm giving these people like a Viking funeral. if they're knights or just regular citizens. So it is over. Connor is his old self. He does not seem to remember anything. That's which probably is a for the best. I suppose we will need to send him to the Circle of Magi's Tower for training once the war is over. It's so odd to think of the boy as a mage of all things. Eamon has much to mourn and rebuild should he recover. But at least he could be thankful that both his son and wife are safe. I owe you my deepest thanks. I had nearly... I can scarcely believe Connor is the boy he once was. There is still a no matter thanks of to you. His poisoning Eamon began this whole mess, yet he lives. I must decide what becomes of him. We will hold him for Eamon to decide his fate. If he doesn't recover, Jowan's fate is sealed. What do you think? Uh, honestly, that sounds good to me, but uh, why do you want my opinion? You spoke with him, have you not? You know what he has done better than I do, even. Alright, well, I think, in general, do whatever you want with him. Very well. I shall have the mage imprisoned again, for now. That's good. But our task is not done yet. Whatever the demon did to my brother, it seems to have spared his life, but he remains comatose. We cannot wake him. The urn. The urn of sacred ashes will save Eamon. Yeah, Eamon is the one who was poisoned. It's his family that got wrought havoc upon by him. It's Eamon's decision what to do with that mage. It's not mine or Tegan's decision. Unless uh, Eamon passes, then Tegan is his heir next of kin. It's his decision. But for now, it's not. It's certainly not going to be as old that's making any decisions. Not if I have a say in it. Mm. I will seek out the urn. Thank you. I am grateful for your eagerness to help restore my husband. Find the brother Genitivi, the scholar, in Denerham. He has been researching the urn's location for several years now. The knights that returned say they were unable to find Genitivi. But perhaps the Maker will lead you to him. I must go to the hall and begin rebuilding. I wish you luck, and may the Maker go with you. You too, Tegan. Take care. Well, on the bright side, Eamon didn't just fall over dead when we uh, got the demon out, so... Whatever magic the demon did to him, it seems to have made him sustainable. Now, as much as it pains me, I'm going to see if she has anything to say. I pray that Eamon awakens soon. I'm actually very thankful that she doesn't. There's no codex in here. Yeah, I think this is the, the best outcome. I wonder if uh, Morrigan will have anything to say about interacting with Connor. You. You're the one who saved me. Actually, it was Morrigan. Then, I guess I owe her thanks. Father always said to remember to thank people who do nice things for you. I hope Father gets better soon. He will. Won't he? If I have anything to do with it, it will. And that's actually uh, the first invite we have to Denerim, so we'll probably be hitting up Denerim real soon, actually. That poor little boy. I just can't bear to think what he must have gone through. It spawned us all the way up at the top. Uh, here's the ramp that I said you couldn't progress past, so we've already cleared out the rest of the castle. We can actually just leave. Um. Yeah, I wonder... I'm not sure when I'll do Denerim. I may go to the Brazilian forest first. We're also going to start stacking up these companion quests if I don't get to that soon, so... After this episode, I'll likely go back to camp and... Talk to a bunch of people, turn in any kind of gifts that we have, and see if we're in a position where we can go get some of those done. You return. Might you have news? Uh, are you calling Eamon's knights back? Yes, but they are returning slowly. 
No doubt the war's progress, as well as the Darkspawns, hinders many of them. I'm sure. I should go. Then I must resume my duties. The civil war continues, and Loghain is no doubt angered Redcliffe has not been disabled. Good luck, my friend. I hope this continues to go well, for all our sakes. And I hope that Redcliffe continuing, is continuing to be a thorn in Loghain's side forever. It is good you resolve this demon business. Now we must either revive the Arl, or allow Van Tegan to take his place. We will certainly work on reviving Arl Eamon. He's going to be a really good voice in the lands, mate. Certainly, as much as it pains me to say, but certainly better than uh, Tegan. Tegan is respected, but not like Eamon. Eamon would be the next contender to the throne, and he is part of the bloodline as Caelan's uncle, so... He's our best bet, and do what we can to help him. Right, I think was well, probably a good spot to wrap up, and then I'll start on the uh, the camp episode. See what we can get in the way of companion quests and dialogues. So, yeah, that's going to be a wrap for this episode, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, leave a like and a comment. If you want to support the cause and help improve the channel, there's a tip link in the description below. Otherwise, stay tuned, and I'll see you guys soon with more Dragon Age Origins. Take care, guys. Have a good day.